Let's return to This Week in America. Here's your host, Rick Bratton. Welcome back, everybody. This Week in America, coast to coast. Debbie Viale has been writing since she was 14 years old, grew up in a small town near the San Francisco Bay in Martinez, California. Debbie has been recognized for outstanding achievement in poetry by the International Society of Poets, a recipient of the Diamond Homer Award from the famous Poet Society of Hollywood, and featured in the book Best Poems and Poets of 2003. Debbie is the author of two delightful children's books, The Boy Without a Home and The Old Woman Inside. And Debbie Viale is our guest on This Week in America. Debbie, welcome to the program. It's great to have you with us. Thank you. Excellent job with the two books. And let's talk about those on the program and where the ideas came from. First of all, let's talk about, well, let's talk about Boy Without a Home. What was the inspiration for for writing that book? You did such an excellent job with this. Where did this idea come from? That was my interpretation of the little boy across the street when I was a child, that when his parents went through a divorce, we were in the third grade. And that's how I looked at him after the divorce. It changed his life dramatically. So the whole neighborhood took him in, you know, so. Yes. So, well, we all left our back doors unlocked. If he was hungry, he could just walk <laughs> into our house and eat. And, you know, so he got to be like our adopted brother that lived across the street. Yes. So this was your interpretation at that point in time. That's amazing because what this this image and he has stayed with you throughout your life to you know eventually you're doing the book to to point out the what a child goes through in divorce later in life this this has been a while that this has been developing in the back of your mind then hasn't it yes it 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 really hit home when uh, he passed away with sugar diabetes and I'm sure it was because of his eating you know habits growing up. Boy, that's so sad to hear. And uh, what a what a tribute in, in using the story to to start a conversation with younger people. That book by Debbie is Boy Without a Home. The other book, The Old Woman Inside, and that's got a special story with it too. What what's the story behind The Old Woman Inside? That one's also a true story. There was an older woman that lived in a Victorian house about a mile down the street, down the highway. And, um, the kids would ride by and, you know, on their bikes and, you know, make comments and tease her being crazy and stuff. She had dementia and her children decided that she was happier there at the house and they lived close by. So they had help, you know, they took care of her daily, but she appeared to us as living alone. And she did really strange things that we thought was funny, you know. So the boys started calling her the crazy old lady. And we would get pollywogs across the street, you know, in the creek bed. And that's how we noticed her, why we were, you know, with our jars yes, getting yes. the little black pollywogs. <laughs> <laughs> well, the books are, are so well done. The Old Woman Inside and Boy Without a Home. Debbie Viale is our guest and the author, D-E-B-B-I-E, and Viale is V-I-A-L-E. The books are available at Amazon, the usual places. Of course, you go to our website, thisweekinamerica.us. You can uh, log in and get all of, all of that information. So many messages, so many themes in these stories. What do you hope that, that readers take away from reading the books, The Old Woman Inside and Boy Without a Home? Well... I just feel that with the old woman inside, a lot of people have aged, aging parents or grandparents that just need to be cared for a little bit more and understood. Um, with that woman, I never really found out exactly what happened to her. Later down the road, I would drive by, you know, as an adult with my children and look at the dilapidated old house. And eventually they tore it down and built condos. And I always wondered what happened to her. And I did call my aunt that's about 14 years older than me. And she said no one ever really knew what happened. That She probably went to a rest home and then eventually passed away. Um, because, you know, all, usually, usually dementia goes into Alzheimer's and then yes. usually within five years you pass. So, But she said she was well taken care of and, you know, 
everybody knew her in town. So what is, what is the age level grade level that you, the, the target audience for, for your books? Um, with the boy without a home starting about five to 10 years old. Yes. And I have, um, five grandchildren. So the stories that I read to them that they actually sit in my lap and listen were the ones that I published their favorite, you know, stories that I read to them. These are books that I can see the, the child reading and imagination, uh, you know, in play as they're reading the books themselves or reading them to adults, or like you said, adults reading the book to children. That's, that really brings up conversations, doesn't it? Besides just the story, but uh, I'm sure that the questions that the children have allows you to, to introduce some, some topics into their lives. Yeah. It can be used for I think for everything. So. Yeah, and it's just, talk about the illustrations of the book, because the, the books are, are beautifully illustrated as well. I love the, the covers for, for both of those. Talk about that and being able to advance the story by, by the pictures. Yes, my first book, um, children's book, Boy Without a Home, I asked my cousin if she happened to know an illustrator that I could use close by. And, um, so she had her, her daughter's sister-in-law, Erin Binsler is her name. And she lives in Antioch and her father was an artist. So she used to grow up, you know, she grew up in his lap and she used to do art with them as a child and she really enjoyed it. You know, it was soothing to her. So I asked her, she happened to be at their house at a family function and she said she would love to work with me side by side on that book. So it that was her first illustrated book and my first children's book. So we had a, you know, it worked out pretty good. Yes, it did. It very smooth. <laughs> it's amazing how something just fit together like that. And you do such a nice job in, in taking these stories and making them relatable for young people. What were some of your influences in growing up and writing? Where did you develop this talent? I have no idea. <laughs> I just, it was just I had there. a teacher in the third grade that was really, really strict. And she was from a long line of teachers, the whole family. Their last name was Tut. So Mrs. Tut, Sylvia, I think it was Cecilia Tut. She was real strict about pronouncing our words perfectly. And, you know, I just liked her and I would listen to her and, you know, rewrite things over and over until my, you know, till my handwriting looked good. And then when I got in high school, I had creative writing, public speaking, and then contemporary literature from another teacher, Mrs. Berger. Um, she was from Berkeley. So I really enjoyed um, the way she taught, how to clear your mind and just put one word on the paper. And then she would leave and go get coffee downstairs and come back and have everybody make a story out of that one word. <laughs> she let us use our free thought too. It yes. didn't matter what you yes. write. I don't care. I just want to see how creative you can be. And so she taught me a lot. Boy, it's a, obviously you were, you described that almost like it was yesterday when you were in her classroom and going through these exercises yes. and, and they've served you so well. I, I talked in the beginning about the, the background in writing poetry. Talk a little bit about that. And are you still writing poetry now? Yes, I am. In fact, I have another book I'm about to publish. And a lot of times I can take a poem if it's really long and I can make, you know, a book out of it. And that's where these children's books were at one time in the beginning, they were a poem. Interesting. So that was the start of these, this idea, a poem, and then became yeah. the, the children's book. I have such admiration for people. It's hard sometimes just to say things in a, in a normal sentence, but to, to go back and to turn it into a, a poetic form as you're able to do, that's a real gift as well. When did, when did you find out that I, you know, I really like this. I really like being able to read poetry and express myself in a poetic fashion. Um. Is that something from an early age that you that you really liked? 
Pardon me? Was that something from an early age that you really that you really liked and found that oh, I, I enjoy this? I, I say that because I ran from poetry because it's like, okay, it's it's difficult enough to make a declarative sentence rather than do it poetically. Was it at an early age when you liked poetry and developed this, this love for poetry? Yes. Um, probably, I'm pretty sure the Beatles had a lot to do with it, ah, and yes. Smokey Robinson and the Miracles, that just, oh, I, I know every word, every one of Smokey Robinson's songs, I just love <laughs> him, so... Those were great days and great music. I can understand yeah. the, the inspiration from that, and and that continues. There was such, yes, there was such a change in music and how people lived and every dressed and everything. Once the '60s were over, it was like we were reborn into another onto another planet or something. It was really a big change in life. So that really resonated, you know, in my mind. So. It's interesting where you we find had more freedom in, in thinking and writing. Yes. So yes. that and helped a lot. There really were no boundaries. I mean, you could just about do right. creatively what you wanted to uh, to do. Debbie Viale is our guest on the program, author of the two children's books we're talking about, The Old Woman Inside and Boy Without a Home. I mentioned Amazon. Is that the best place to uh, to buy your books? Um, author House also is who published these okay. books. So you can actually buy them from Author House as well. Okay, we'll have all that information on our website, Author House or, or Amazon.com. And you can go to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, and uh, we'll have all the information there. What are you working on now? You mentioned a couple of things that uh, sound like projects that you've got going. It sounds like you're always busy and always have things going on. What are you, what are you working on now? I'm working on another book. It was actually a poem, and... Um, or two of them. And one's about aliens and that'll be more for teenage readers. And then I have another one about reincarnation. Interesting. And that one's got a lot of twists and turns in it, but they're just in the making. The, the story is just, you know, on paper, the idea is on paper. So yes. then I have to go in basically and edit it and then make like a screen screenwrite it in order to make it to where it could, you know, go into a book. Well, we will look forward to those. Who are some of the, the authors, the poets that, that have an influence on you, that you enjoy reading? Who are some of those that, uh, if you've got the chance, I would like to sit down and, and read something by these people. Oh, I don't know. Maybe Hemingway. Oh, okay. Um, there's a couple of poets that, that triggered my interest when I was young offhand. Um, I'm not sure. <laughs> There's well, yeah. quite a few. You know, it's interesting and um, it's funny the, the, where we get inspiration. I'm still thinking about the Beatles yeah. and Smokey Robinson and yeah, what the what great a lot of yeah, yeah. songwriters. Yes. A lot of songwriters, especially coming out of uh, that John era. Fogarty. Oh yes. John Fogarty. Um, and then there's some country singers, too. I have worked with Merle Haggard in the past um, with Bob Newcomb, that was his producer. And then he passed away of a massive heart attack one day when I called with to talk to Teresa Haggard and let her know that there was a new poem on its way by fact. She just broke down and, and told me that they just lost Bob two days earlier. So that was heartbreaking. So I stayed on the phone with her for a while and, you know, gave my condolences. It was yes. really sad. So that, that kind of put a damper on that because I didn't have that connection any longer. That, yes. Um, and then also my daughter married a songwriter and singer and he's in the, he's in the, you know, producing an album right now, getting ready. It's not quite finished. So um, he has a different genre, you know, it's, it's heavy yes. metal, but still he has the same messages that we all have. It's just a different style of music. You've got such a diverse background and diverse group of people. It's just, it's amazing. And the end product is, is so much of, of what you've done, including the children's book. And I'll, a couple of minutes left here on the program. What was it like to, to have these stories from childhood 
now published with, with the two books that we're talking about, The Old Woman Inside and Boy Without a Home. How rewarding was it to actually see your story come to life in these beautifully done books? It was exciting, especially when I got the Diamond Homer. That was really exciting because oh, yes. I didn't yes. think that I, yeah, I didn't think that I had, you know, that I wouldn't get the attention that I got from that. Well, it's certainly well-deserved. It's just uh, uh, you're doing such excellent work, and hopefully we'll stay in touch and talk about uh, some of the other projects you've got coming up. Debbie Viali has been our guest on the program. That's V-I-A-L-E. Debbie is D-E-B-B-I-E. The two books we're talking about, The Old Woman Inside and Boy Without a Home, available at Amazon as well as Author House. Debbie, it's been a pleasure having you on the program. Congratulations on the success of uh, these two books, uh, the messages out there, the themes for young children, young readers, and so much in your career. Thank you for spending some time with us on the program today. would love to be able to do this again. Thank you very much, Rick. It has been I our enjoyed pleasure. enjoyed it. Debbie Vialli, our guest on the program, that's V-I-A-L-E. If you're going to be Googling, looking for the books, books available at Amazon, you'll find them at Author, uh, uh, Author House as well. If you go to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, you can link on directly. You're listening to This Week in America, back on today's program after these messages. This Week in America is online. You can visit our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Scott Pinkerton, associate producer of This Week in America. Jay Anderson, segment producer. Ben Watson, webmaster. Otto Bache, director of engineering and TV production. This Week in America produced and is a trademark of Blue Funk Broadcasting, LLC. For information on all of our guests and to listen to this week's show, our website again at thisweekinamerica.us. And I'm Sean Bratton, executive producer of This Week in America.